Anatole, of course, is a, a beautiful person. I've known him for so many years. Now, he was born in 1930 in Kiev, Ukraine. And uh, he, his father was a, was a nuclear scientist. His mother was a nurse. And um, Anatole's father died from radiation poisoning when he was 10 years old. I made a mistake when I was talking to Rima and said one years old. It was actually 10 years old. And uh, so uh, they moved to uh, Uzbekistan, where um, and Anatole's brother lived, and he took them in and cared for them for many years there. And then eventually Anatole um, uh, had to flee to uh, Stalingrad uh, in 1941, two weeks before the Nazis came in uh, to, to invade uh, Ukraine. And so they made it to, uh, uh, they escaped, of course, and you know, were able to survive. And then eventually he went to school in Uzbekistan, uh, graduated there, and then he moved back to Ukraine. And we're going to take a look at the next slide. And here is where he entered his architectural studies. Now, this is from the uh, 1947, the photograph of the Kiev State Art Institute, which is now, by the way, called the Ukrainian State Art Academy. And this photo was taken uh, with a group of architectural students, along with Anatole, who won the third prize for a major city hospital uh, in Kiev, which is pretty amazing when you think about that. Now, Anatole, of course, is standing uh, on the far right. You can see uh, his, his wonderful hair once again. And there he is, uh, you know, in his prime, uh, an architectural student working on getting this wonderful prize, third prize for a major city hospital in Kiev. I hope the hospital will be safe as we see so many hospitals being ravaged right now as we speak. Now, in 1951, as an architectural student, he had the great honor of doing restoration at the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg. Let's go to the next slide. Here is the Hermitage. Now, this is one of the many rooms upon which he worked. This is actually the small Throne room, throne room for uh, Peter the Great. Uh, I'd like to see what the large throne room looks like. This is the small one. And uh, it's pretty amazing when you, you, uh, you see the amount of work that was involved in the restoration of the Hermitage. It's really incredible. Um, I was at the Hermitage uh, several times, and one of the times we went, they had a display of photographs of the restoration projects. They show what the Hermitage looked like uh, after the war and the bombing of St. Petersburg. It was pretty much devastated. And then they showed the progress of the restoration until it was brought back to the glory that you see now in this magnificent museum. Some of the greatest treasures on earth are in the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg. Let's go to the next one. Now here's a wonderful thing. 2013, July, I took a group of VIP collectors to the Hermitage Museum for a tour and we presented to the museum a copy of the Anatole Krasniansky book, which is the catalog raisonné of all of his uh, graphic works. And so the beautiful, I think, wonderful poetry, if you will, of Anatole having worked in, at the Hermitage Museum in, you know, the 1950s. 1947, actually, when he started the project, and then uh, 51, you know, the restoration of the Hermitage, and then in 2013, having his book placed into the permanent library of the Hermitage Museum. I think that's a kind of kind of a neat thing to think about, kind of a beautiful, you know, uh, coming for, full circle for Anatole. Let's take a look at some of his uh, pro professional architectural projects, which are really impressive. Uh, this one, uh, they, they really ran from 1954 to about 1974 or so. Now, this is, is one of the many designs he created for the Panther Pantheon in Moscow, and this is the particular part of the Pantheon, the Mausoleum of the Famous. It's an amazing uh, concept. But look at that it, that building, just exquisite. Just the whole conception of the building is remarkable. Powerful, powerful architectural work. Let's go to the next one. Here's one of his, his uh, studies for his drawings for the interior of the main lobby, once again, for the Pantheon in Moscow. And here's a marvelous example of his incredible technical virtuosity as an architect and a draftsman. You can see his signature there at the bottom right. That's one of his drawings in preparation for that amazing project, which is truly, truly incredible. Now, let's go to the next slide. Uh, Anatole, of course, was very frustrated with living in the Soviet system. He was fed up, in essence, with you know uh, the the, the uh, challenges of living as a Soviet, uh, constantly being monitored. Uh, he was told what he had to paint, what he had to create, and being Jewish, he was subject to virulent anti-Semitism, and he really wanted to leave the Soviet Union. This photograph was taken the day before he and his family left. Uh, the Soviet Union in 1974. That is his daughter, Rima, with whom I had a marvelous interview the other day. And uh, she was eight years old in this photograph. So this is obviously the last photograph presumably taken 
uh, in their homeland before they left and and fled and, and were able to uh, you know to, to leave. And of course, they went to uh, uh, to um, uh, Germany. They spent time in in uh, Austria. They spent time in Ro in Rome as well. Anatole absorbing the classical architecture and art in Rome was a treat for him. And they finally made it to Los Angeles in 1975, early 1975. Let's go to the next side. Now, Anatole uh, was looking for work when he got to Los Angeles. Can you imagine? He speaks no English. Uh, he has a portfolio of these just absolutely jaw-dropping designs, architectural designs, and he's taking his portfolio around to try and get work to support his family. Uh, you know, the bravery, the courage taking from leaving your country, uh, you know, leaving what you have in the country to try and uh, try and aspire toward freedom and come to the United States. And uh, he finally, he, he can't get any work as an architect because um, there's no work at the time. 19, uh, you know, 76, it was, there was a recession going on. No one was building. And so he was unable to find work as an architect in his field. So he finally was able to enter into Hollywood and, and doing set designs, scenic designs for Hollywood, motion pictures, television shows. This is the set upon which he worked. Now think about this. 1975, he arrives in Los Angeles. 1976, he creates this with a group of people. And this is the... Uh, the Academy Awards stage for the Academy Awards in 1976 in Hollywood, California. He actually received a certificate of professional contribution from ABC for creating this award. Pretty amazing um, when you think about that. Let's go to the next slide. Now let's take a look at some of his roots. This is very important for Anatole. He's in America now and he's making drawings about his past. He's nostalgic about his roots, and he, he says this on a continual basis. Never forget your roots as an artist. You always have to understand that something has to be implanted from your experience, where you've grown, where you've come from, what your life is all about, and continue to honor that and continue to bring that forward in your work. So look at this just exquisite drawing. This is the street of uh, Lvov. Uh, in pen and ink, and of course we hear about uh, Lviv, uh, Lviv rather, all the time now uh, because of what's happening in Ukraine. It's constantly in the news. So this is actually a building in, in Lviv. Uh, it's quite possible it's not standing any longer now. It could have been bombed out by now considering all the, you know, the ravages taking place there. But I thought it was just a great example of, again, a beautiful rendering of Anatole's incredible ability as an architect and a draftsman. Now, interestingly, 1976, he decides he wants to take his watercolor paintings he's working on at the time and see if he can start getting some exposure as an artist. Uh, he can't find work as an architect. He's working in Hollywood, you know, doing scenic designs. So he approaches one of the most prestigious galleries in Los Angeles. Very, very intimidating situation to walk into the gallery with his watercolors, with his portfolio. The director sees the watercolors. She absolutely flips out over them and she says to him, we're going to be doing a show of watercolors and we're calling it uh, Watercolor Masters, International Watercolor Masters. Would you like to participate in the show? And of course, Anatole says yes. And it turns out, let's go to the next slide. They use his painting for the poster of the exhibition. So there is Anatole's painting, St. Mark's Square. And the International Watercolor Masters, Anatole Krasniansi, the Dazzle Hatfield Gallery in Los Angeles. He's showing in the same exhibition with watercolors by Picasso, Kandinsky, Marc Chagall, Diego Rivera, Paul Clay, Camille Pizarro, and other important artists working in watercolor. That is truly amazing. And uh, what, a, what a triumph for Anatole in 1976, the, you know, the first year he's in Los Angeles, California. I'd like to take a look now at some landmark pieces by Anatole. I think you'll find these interesting. Let's look at some of these really interesting works he's created in his past. Now, this is just a, a powerful and compelling work. This, this painting was done in 1977. It's called The Sage. And uh, he writes about this work. He's, he's talking about Democritus, the, um, the great uh, uh, scientist in ancient Greece. And he says, Democritus, Isaac Newton... Albert Einstein, they changed our understanding of nature and the universe. He went on to say they opened new possibilities for better understanding and new discoveries. And this, of course, is his homage to the sage, the sages, the people who found new ways of seeing the world and discovering the world. Isn't that a spectacular painting, ladies and gentlemen? Just absolutely riveting when you, you, you think about that. And here's beginning to work with that paper, that textured paper, bringing strong texture into the composition. Let's go to the next one. 1976, he creates this painting called The Man of Destiny. 
I think one of the most compelling paintings he created. And uh, he, he writes in this work that it, it's based on a novel uh, created in 1956 called The Monument of the Crossbearer. And the, uh, the, the novel was based upon the life of Vincent van Gogh, which I think is fascinating. You, of course, see this Christ-like figure, but you also see something very similar to van Gogh. If you look at the red beard, for example, the tonality of the painting. Uh, and he said, uh, through suffering and hardship, the man of destiny found his way to the truth. Think about that in reference to Van Gogh and in reference to Jesus. Uh, he developed a new idea and made this idea a reality. Another beautiful poetic comment from Anatole uh, on one of his most, I think, powerful images as he's evolving as a great artist. Now, 1981, it's interesting. He uh, uh, has to go to work for an ABC special. This is 1981. And the special is involving the rock band Kiss. And I think everybody out there knows the rock band Kiss, right? And so Anatole uh, sees this experience. He's actually traumatized by it. It was overwhelming to him being, of course, classically trained in music as a classical violinist. He had never experienced anything like it. And he went back and told his wife about this horrific vision from hell. He described it as with the leather and the flames and the tongues and the spikes and the loud, <laughs> the loud music. And uh, he kept talking about it and talking about it. She finally said, Anatole, why don't you paint something and try to get this out of your system? And so he created the painting called Rock and Roll, which is the next slide. So this is the painting that Anatole created after experiencing the rock band Kiss. And this is the origin, this is the, the, uh, the catalyst, if you will, for the second style of Anatole Krasniansky's work. And uh, he writes uh, about this uh, pretty extensively in his book. And he says, for several years, I worked from the point of revelation until I hit the combination that suited my aesthetic needs. No longer bound by external reality, I struggled to grasp the vital essence of my interlocked figures and convey the rhythm of their personal interactions. I found that like my cityscapes, my new work also recorded the inner spirit of its subject, bordering on the surreal. My figures never departed from the recognizable. I found them to be completely new in form, but they contain echoes of my Eastern European heritage from which I can never completely depart. And he talked about the Baroque and the medieval as being important influences in this, uh, this incredible series. This painting hangs in his, in his home in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, that painting will be, in my opinion, in a wonderful museum someday. I along with certainly it. will, along, a wild piece. And that's on the cover yeah. of, of the book as well. By the way, we're gonna include an example of the book, which is again in the, the permanent library of the Hermitage, who anyone who collects an original Krasniewski tonight. And Kayla, let's make sure we have a book, uh, uh, of course, for that beautiful painting we just uh, 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 had collected a few moments ago. Now, uh, the last work of art I want to show you is this one. This is in Antol's home. This is when I visited him in uh, 2013. This is the Masquerade in Venice. This is a, a painting upon which he worked for five years. And uh, it is a true masterpiece. It is the Piazza San Marco in the background of Venice. It has an amazing sense of perspective, architectural perspective. You can see the size of the painting just by where we're standing in front of it, see the, the scale of the painting. And then what's interesting, you have the combination of his architecture in the background, this meticulously created architectural rendering of Venice. Then you have this um, um, intermediate space. You have the receding floor in perspective pushing back into, into space. And then on top of the floor, you have this amazing arrangement of his figures. But unlike many of the paintings that he does that have almost two-dimensional quality to them, these figures are almost modeled like sculpture, almost like they're sculptures residing inside the work, twisting and turning and moving and writhing. It's an incredible thing to see. And this, of course, is the great painting, The Masquerade in Venice, uh, again, which hangs in his home. And that, that, again, will be in a major museum. Now, we have several works of art in the collection this weekend that are derived from this masterpiece. Uh, they are sections of the work that he reworked. They're images that ins were inspired by this, by this particular image. And you'll see them. And when they come up for auction, if they're requested, I'll be sure and point them out to you. But as you look through the collection, try and think about this work, for example, and, uh, and you'll see some references to it continually uh, within the collection that we're offering this weekend. So it's very important work in terms of the genesis of creating an entire body of work beyond this. Last uh, slide I want to I show you is a little... little sh uh, uh, exhibition here. This is a photograph of Anatole's amazing show, his museum exhibition at the Museum of Tolerance, which was just a, a fantastic experience for Anatole in 2016. Uh, that is uh, Nelly, his wife on the far right. 
I believe that's one of the administrators of the museum uh, next to uh, next to Nelly. There's Anatole in the center. Uh, that is Diane Pandolfi, who's in charge of the Park West Foundation. We were co-sponsors of that show. That's uh, um, Rima, who I interviewed, of course. You recognize her from the interview. I don't know who the woman is uh, behind her. And that's uh, 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 Tommy, oh, I forgot his name, Tommy Sanders, I think is his name. He's a uh, former NBA star who was a great friend of Anatole's and helped uh, a sponsor the, um, the exhibition as well. Marvelous museum show of Anatole Kresiansi's work, Museum of Tolerance. Uh, one of many museum exhibitions, in my opinion, that will be held by this great, this great American artist, this, this real American jewel, and I think one of the great elder statesman artists of our time. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's our little uh, foray into the life and times of Anatole Kresiansi. Hope you enjoyed that.